Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Again. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with episode 1084, the penultimate episode of Wano of One Piece. Uh, yeah, this is the second to last episode. Next episode is the last episode of the Wano Kuni arc. And it's, it's exceptionally wild, because it's been almost three years since we started Wano. And obviously more for those who had been watching it before I got to it, of course, um, when it actually started airing. Um, it's It's been a wild ride, but it's, it's finally ending. And we get to go into the final saga. But right now we're just kind of winding down. The fight with Ryukugyu is over. Everyone's just kind of hanging around and dealing with uh, partying, celebration. Yamato is figuring out what to do. And it seems like at this point, after all the big revelations, Luffy becoming an emperor, um, the cross guild being revealed and so much more, the crew is just going to head out. <laughs> Uh, Momo wants to see them off one last time, but, I, I mean, I assume he will. Um, we're closing everything out. We're finally ending this, and it's going to be a sad farewell, but that just means new stuff to come. Um, I'm kind of wondering when the new opening is going to start, because this opening obviously is only relevant for the the aftermath here. Um, th this current opening is only really relevant to the aftermath of the Wano arc, the post-Wano, if you want to go with that, like I've been doing so. Um, it's only really relevant to that. I mean, maybe have it play for like a couple like in-between episodes where it's like talking about what's going on in the world and stuff. But once they start the next arc, they've got to bring in a new opening, right? Maybe not like right away, but at least a few episodes in, um, they can't have this opening play forever. Um, it's just, I know it, it feels like this opening just started, just started coming in, but at the same time, it's like, this always felt like a transitional opening anyway. I mean, half of the opening is just flashbacks shots from Wano and whatnot that just show everything that's built up to this. And then the rest of it is just like fun little shots of the characters from this arc. It really isn't relevant past this. So keeping it too far past this just would not make sense. Most One Piece uh, openings early on, like pre-time skip, can work at almost any point. Um... But after a certain while, they started becoming a lot more arc-focused. And so it started to become like, oh, no, this opening is specifically for this arc. Or these three or so openings are for this arc. And Wano, I think, has four, including this one, um, because of how fucking long it is. Um, but, like I said, it's like, maybe for the first few episodes of the next arc they can carry it over, but they've got to bring in a new opening. They, they kind of just have to, at this point. Like I said, this opening just doesn't, it won't work anymore. It won't make sense to keep showing all the Wano stuff when we're not in Wano and none of those characters are around anymore. So this opening is going to be going to have a rather short uh, lifespan compared to others, but that's fine. I mean, that, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but that it is definitely something that has to change. I haven't heard anyone talking about that though. Weirdly enough, um, a lot of openings recently, not just with Wano, but in in the post time skip and all have had a lot longer lifespan, so I'm wondering exactly when this one is going to close. Uh, I think this might be the shortest opening of the post-time skip. 
But I, I think it's necessary. Because once we get to the, the next island, it's like, again, it's just not going to work. Maybe in the lead up to that island, we can still have it. But once we hit that next island, we have to change the opening. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what to expect with this episode. Um, so at this point, I guess we should just get right into it. And see how this continues to close out the arc. Um, so yeah, let's do so. <laughs> when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in three, two, one, now. So, yeah, this was just an episode of goodbyes. An episode of goodbyes, an episode of closing up all of these different plot points. And just, uh... Getting ready to head out. Next episode, we will finish this out. Next episode, we will say goodbye to the land of Wano, to Momo, to Kinemon, to everyone. We're going to, uh, we're going to leave it behind and move on, move forward. And I think that it's, it's going to be a sad farewell, but, but a really cathartic one. This says this arc has been going on for so long now. And while it's definitely my favorite arc, it's going to feel good to move forward. Knowing that Wano will be in good hands. And knowing that the future has so much to look forward to. Like I've said, we're heading into the final saga. The final series of arcs of the entirety of One Piece. And while, that could, while that's more than likely still years out, we are in that last run to the end. So much is going to happen. So much is going to be revealed. And it's insane to think about. But we still have one episode for Wano. We have to say our final goodbyes. We have to head out. And then, like I said, we'll probably have some stuff in between showing what's going on in the world. And then we'll start up the next arc. It's our first time going to a new arc with Jinbei, like, on the ship as part of the full crew. Technically, Wano started with Jinbei already being a part of the crew, but he wasn't traveling with them yet because he had to stay behind in Whole Cake. Um, this is our first time with him traveling on the ship as the helmsman of the crew as we go into the next arc. And that's exciting. This episode, we said goodbye to Carrot. We said goodbye to Toko and Hiyori. We said goodbye to uh, the, the girl from Onigashima that, San, that fell in love with Sanji. We said some goodbyes. And it's time to move on. It's, it's time. So now we just have to wait for Momo and Kinemon to arrive with Yamato. And for the final last words to be said. 
and to find out what Usopp has in store, because apparently he's planning something with a bunch of black uh, cloth. So that's going to be interesting to see. We didn't see everybody say goodbye. Like, we saw, like, Frankie's goodbye with the boss. We, we didn't see Usopp have any notable goodbye with anyone. He didn't really have any, like, big connections outside of other characters that were just, like, general connections for a lot of people. Um, we didn't see Robin have any big goodbyes, um, or Brooke. Jinbei obviously got there late, so we wouldn't have seen anything with him. Uh, we didn't even really see Nami outside of, like, the goodbye with Kara at the beginning, but that was a group goodbye. So it's like, there, there's a, we didn't get to see everyone there ha have a notable, like, specific one. Um, obviously the one that hit me the most was Zoro's, just specifically because of Toko. Like, I I've seen him, like, at Yasui and Pedro's graves, paying his respects with the Saki and everything. And it's like, I I'm, I I'm just thinking that's what it's gonna be. Then Toko comes up and it's like, just instantly, wave of emotions hits me. And it just like, it starts, it gets to me. And seeing her paying her respects in, in, in such a mature, beautiful way, it just, it, it's like, yeah, it got to me. It, it made me cry. It made me cry. I tried to hold it in. I tried to stop it, but it made me cry. Um, even the part with Tama and her getting to say her goodbyes with Luffy like, didn't hit me as hard, which is, don't get me wrong, it hit me hard, it just didn't make me cry. Because the thing is, like, yeah, that was the obvious goal since the beginning of this arc. To make, uh, well, at least one of the major goals. To make Wano a country again, where Tama could have whatever she wants. Where she never has to go hungry. That was one that, that was one of the main goals of this arc. An inciting incident was Tama growing sick from drinking the river water. That was a massive incident that incited Luffy and Zoro both to act in this arc. And it helped Tama become a beloved character within the fandom. It's just personally for me, and I've said this before in previous uh, reactions and all, Toko hit me so much harder. Like, don't get, again, don't get me wrong. I, I adore Tama. Her story is extremely tragic and sad, and I'm glad that she's able to move on and have everything she wants and needs. But Toko's story, especially, like, Seeing her father get murdered in front of her, being forced to live with not only, you know, being poor and hungry and everything, but also cursed with this defective smile. It's, it's, a, it's just so much more tragic to me and so much more emotional. It made me connect more with her character, and it's just like... <laughs> I'm not even kidding when I say she's one of my favorite characters of this arc. Right up there with Kiku and Yamato. I like her more than almost all of the Akazaya 9. I like her more than a, pretty much any of these side characters. I like her more than Momo or Kinemon or... It's just, it, it's wild to think about, but it's just like, th this just endeared me to her that much. And part of it, 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 and part of it is easy because I am very easily endeared to a lot of, uh, babies, as I, as, as I, as I often call them. Um, child characters like this who are just absolute adorable baby beings and everything. It's like, 
I very much uh, get endeared to them easily. Um, it's it's par partially because uh, one of the things I want the most is to be a mother. <laughs> so I, I want to have a baby of my own, maybe even a couple. Um, it, it's it's kind of like a dream of mine, you could say. Um, so. And I, I, I've, like, loved working, like, working with, like, daycare stuff and all at, like, churches I've been to. Um, it was kind of a dream of mine at one point to become a daycare worker. Not, like, run a daycare, but just work at one. But, you know discriminatory practices with that. I did try, believe it or not. I did actually try. I did apply for that at one point when I was in college. Um, that was well before I came out and everything. And, you know, they discriminate against me because I, at the time, identified as a man. And now they would probably discriminate me because I'm trans. But still... Point is, it's like it, it's definitely because of my my dream, my desire to have children of my own someday that makes me get really easily endeared to characters like this. And seeing a child character go th go through like extreme tragedy, like both of these have, like Toko and Tama both have, has definitely endeared me to them. But Toko, it's just, it, it, it's just, it's just, it's like one slight level above that just like makes me so much more empathetic and, and emotionally connected to her. So, yeah. Uh, she's probably going to be one of the characters I miss the most, if I'm being completely honest. But I, I'm going to miss so many of them, especially the ones we've been traveling with for even longer than Wano. Like, we've been with Kinemon and Momo since Punk Hazard. It's going to be sad to see them go, too. But it's that time. This is what that was all leading up to, so... How is the final goodbyes going to be? That's the question. And then we head out to the next stage, the final stage of our adventure. So, yeah, I don't really have much else to say with this. I'm just, uh, I, I, I am ready. For this to end, I know I, I know it, it might sound a little weird. Like a lot of people might say, "Oh, I'm not ready for Wano to be over." I'm ready. I'm satisfied. I I feel like some people would say that it, it's gone on too long, that it, it was way too overextended and whatnot. But I disagree. I think that it. It was perfectly paced. It ended right when it needed to. There were only a couple, like, small pacing issues within Onigashima, but as a whole, I felt Wano's uh, structure was extremely well paced. I just... My, my, the only thing I would have changed is... I. I would have had the ba the the war at Onigashima be in Act Four instead of being also part of Act Three that had already been going on at that point. Because it's like, oh, you have Act Three with everything with the flat the Odin flashbacks and the stuff leading up to the raid on Onigashima. When they got to Onigashima, it should have started Act Four. It, it, it felt like a completely different portion of the story. It didn't feel right to include it with Act Three. 
Um, that that's that's the one big change I would make there. Um, but other than that, again, it's like other than a, a, a couple episodes maybe dragging a little bit, very minorly. I I, I felt like overall this is what it needed to be. This is what I would have hoped it to be. And again, I'm satisfied. I'm not going to be sad to see it go. I, I'm going to be happy to have experienced what I did. And while I'm, I'm going to miss a lot of the characters that we've spent so much time with by now, I'm happy that they're moving on to the next stages in their lives and their journeys. It would have been nice to see like Carrot join the crew, but she's leading the Macomo dukedom now. Which may be a little insane to think about because it's fucking Karen. She's not really mature enough to lead a nation, but you know what? They trust her. I guess that's good enough. Wano's in really good hands. We can tell that already. And things can progress. So I'm satisfied. Next episode, we close Wano out. And I hope you are ready for what is sure to be an extremely emotional episode. So thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.